So the other day, my four-year-old son goes into the bathroom, and I hear my electric razor running, and I go, Gabriel, what are you doing? He yells back at me, My legs are pokey. I've got so much work with that boy. Now I'm going to geek out. I think the uh, big buzz from ASCII Portal has died down, but there are still some people coming in and playing the game. If you don't know what ASCII Portal is, here's a quick explanation. ASCII Portal is a game I made. Go play it. I want to answer the question of how I did that really cool view that's kind of central to making ASCII Portal cool. Despite my best attempts at making this interesting to watch, there's still some heavy mathematics ahead, so be aware of it. There's a lot to go through, and I tried compressing it down as best I could, so let's get started. Of the few comments that I got about how the view in ASCII Portal might have been accomplished, the most common idea was that it was some form of ray casting. It's not. That works fine for a quasi-3D view when you're only doing a 90 degree range of angles that you're looking at, but when you're doing 360 degrees, it gets computationally expensive to do. Now, for ASCII Portal's view, I ended up having to review for myself two mathematical concepts in order to make it work. The more complicated of the two was matrix rotation. Matrix rotation is taking the x and y point that you want want to rotate pi and multiplying it by the 2x2 two two matrix cosine theta, sine theta, negative sine theta, cosine theta. Now, if you don't remember how matrix multiplication works, don't worry. It's actually pretty simple to just pre-multiply this out and end up with two equations that you can use. Your new x is going to be x times cosine theta plus y times sine theta, and your new y is going to be y times cosine theta minus x times sine theta. And if the sine thetas and cosine thetas are freaking you out, relax. All you need is the angle, call it theta, and then plug it into your calculator and hit the sine button the cosine button. And you're going to get back a number that probably doesn't mean a whole lot to you, but it's going to work for the math. Like, for example, if I wanted to take 0.34 and rotate it by a 25 degree rotation, well, my new x would be 3 times cosine 25 plus 4 times sine of 25, because 25 is my theta. Now, 25 cosine is 0 0.906, yada, yada, yada. And sine of 25 degrees is 0 0.423. We'll round that off. So you need to take 3 times 0 0.906 plus 4 times 0 0.423. Remember to do the multiplication before the addition, and your new x is 4.41. In the same way, your new y would be 2.36. Plot these on the xy graph, and you'll see that around the origin, the point zero zero, there's a 25 degree rotation. Now, the next concept is actually much easier. It's linear algebra, and hopefully that rings a bell for you. If not, maybe this will. y equals mx plus b. Actually, I needed to use a different form that took two points, created the m between them, and then used, again, two points to calculate it. It looks like this. y1 minus y2 equals m times times the quantity x1 minus x2. And in order to make this work, I actually had to put the y1 and the x1 on one side and the y2 and x2 on the other side. Just multiply through and do some subtraction addition. There you go. So on the one side, I've got y1 minus mx1 equals y2 minus mx2. And I'm actually not going to use an equal sign. I'm going to use greater than or less than because I want the area underneath or above that straight line. All right, I'm not going to mention any more about that. If you know this, you'll be able to reproduce it. And if you don't, you won't. But let me show you how I used it. So here I'm making a map with some internal walls. And let's say I fire a portal here and here. So the first step is to take a copy of this map just as it is and line it up with the blue portal where the yellow portal is. But since the view is rotated 90 degrees, or will be rotated 90 degrees, first thing to do is rotate the view 90 degrees. Now, okay, you can't see the view below it because, well, it's, it's over top of it. So the first thing we need to do is take a straight line, that's where the linear algebra comes in, and cut off the area below it in this case so that we can uh, see everything there. Well, that works okay, except now we need to draw two more straight lines and cut off anything that's right over here. I figure out the greater than or less than by looking at where the portal is. And then I create another straight line through the player to the left of the portal a little bit and cut off anything to the left of it. Easy. There's your first view. You do the same thing for the other view. Make a copy of the entire map, rotate it, make a straight line through the portal and cut off anything that's on the player side. Make a straight line through the player a little bit above the portal and cut off anything that's above it because the portal is below it. Make another straight line, cut off anything that's below it. Ta-da! We've got wedges. And this method will work. It will resize as you move dynamically. It's all really just an optical illusion in its own way. I'm just creating the shape that we want and overlaying it in the right place. And that's all there is to it. Easy, huh? Well, okay, maybe not that easy, but at least give me credit for being the first person to figure it out. Some of you might be asking after all that, is he asking for people to rip off his great idea? Yes! I want to play more games like this. And the only way that's going to happen is if other people make them. I'm going to try and make other games that build off of this mechanic. I want to see other people take this idea and run with it. 
That's all I got. Thanks for watching. Come visit me at Simon's Games at www.cymonsgames.com.